Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move and for today's episode, the very first of our series, Lively Liverpool. Uh, of course, our Dortmund one ended somewhat earlier than expected, but yeah, it'll be interesting to take, take on Liverpool. There's a bunch of things to cover. We, I'd love to cover every single one of these tabs in truth, but obviously there's no time for that. We want to show you the very first game of our season, which is away to Manchester United. So incredibly open, uh, incredibly important way to open the season. And obviously we'll be hoping for all three points. Um, you know, what better way to win over the Liverpool faithful, isn't it? But um, yeah, I mean, let's, we can quickly go through some things. I'm pretty sure everyone wants to see what type of transfers I've done. So we'll do that first. Um, you know what? I actually completely forgot that Nabi Keita is coming in for us. Or Keita, let's just call him Nabi, is coming in. And is he coming in January? He is... No, he's coming next season. Okay, that's fine. Uh, as long as I know he's there now. Um, but yeah, in terms of transfer history, a couple of wins, uh, mainly in defence. We've got Vidal coming in on loan. Um, we also got Mark Barta and Wallace from Dortmund and Lazio, respectively. Uh, and in terms of outs, no real major ones. We've loaned out a couple of youngsters. Uh, Alexander Arnold was apparently not ready for first team football, uh, or for the Premier League rather. Um, which is a bit unusual because, you know, Stoke did come in and get him and say that he's a first teamer. So maybe he is and maybe my coach was wrong, but I was relying on my head of youth development. So if anyone would know, it'd be him. And apparently my scout's telling me also that he's just a championship player. So hopefully next season he comes back ready for us because we do need that depth in right back. Um, in terms of defensive midfield, we don't necessarily need him there. But it's good to see that he's a versatile player. And if, ne if needed, uh, we could have him there. The only bad thing, to be honest, is that he cuts inside from the right wing, which I don't want my fullbacks to be doing. Uh, the major move really is just Lovren. Uh, gone to PSG for 23.5 million. So... In terms of outs, just 23.5 million. In terms of ins, we spent 53 million. But bear in mind, half of Barter and Wallace's fees, both of them are not being paid up front. And instead, they'll be paid over, you know, the installment periods. Uh, so I think I did it 48 months. Um, and uh, yeah, so you could say like 15 million uh, given to Dortmund over the span of 48 months. So that's three years. So it's really not that as much damage as it looks. But obviously, it is how much we spent as well. So you do have to keep that in mind. Uh, Lazar Markovic as well on loan to Manchester City. I was trying to get rid of him. Um, but yeah, no one necessarily in for him. So I just loaned him out. And City were ones who were interested. A bit unusual. But they were happy to pay a 75k uh, fee. Uh, to be honest, he's a decent player. Uh, it'd be nice to have him in our team. But... Uh, we're actually uh, got an abundance of attacking talent. So that's our main issue, trying to get the best out of our players. Uh, we've got way too many attackers in truth and a lot of them are expecting first team football. I think maybe, um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, if we could have a look. So Chamberlain to about Sturridge there, we've got seven players expecting first team football and just four slots to put them in. In fact, some of them are actually expecting to be key players for the club uh, so it is a bit of a problem obviously some players will complain and the truth is uh, quite a number of these players actually won't make it at the club because they will complain about first team football and I will move them on uh, I feel like there should be a better balance to the squad there's a lot of nice depth and stuff but it's, it's kind of um a chaotic depth I suppose I would say I would call it because a lot of these players aren't are expecting first team football when they aren't necessarily going to get it so we'll talk more about our tactic and who we're going to be selecting or whatnot but um, we'll save that for later uh, in terms of the pre-season I know some of you care about that to be honest I'm not really a big fan I don't read it into it too much but it's good to see us get wins against Roma and AC Milan the truth is I let my assistant manager uh, um, uh, manage the uh, friendlies anyway so I can't read into it too much but he does use my tactics of course but still uh, not too much in there so this transfers showed you the schedule in terms of finances we've still got a decent amount of money so we still are looking to bring in someone else um, but yeah, in terms of the squad themselves, we've got some nice, decent players. So Minole, uh, Simon Minole and uh, Loris Karius are both our goalkeepers. Uh, Karius is actually going to be our backup goalkeeper. Uh, Simon's expecting first team football and uh, he just about edges Loris in terms of ability right now. But if Loris can improve into a leading goalkeeper, then we'll definitely move him. So we'll be playing Loris in the cup competitions as much as possible to help him develop. Um, but I thought I'd give Loris a season's worth of trust to see if he develops into a leading goalkeeper. 
goalkeeper. If he doesn't, we'll pretty much move on both Simon and Loris. Bring in a first uh, choice uh, or for leading Premier League goalkeeper and a backup youngster with potential so there's a better balance in our goalkeeping department. In terms of the right back, Nathaniel Klein is out for a huge chunk of the season so that's why I bought in Vidal. Uh, hopefully until about winter time then we can cancel his loan. Uh, we've got John Flanagan as well as a backup. Now he's not really the best backup I thought I just really need someone to fill in for one season and that's it because when Trent comes back he's going to be the youngster with potential. John Flanagan is very susceptible to injuries as well, which is a type of player that I don't like. Uh, he's a decent player for most Premier League sides, so he's good enough for the first division uh, or the you know the top league, and he, he's good enough for first team basically. Um, his potential ability is close to finishing at 24 years of age. The likelihood is if he if he does improve, he would only improve to a good player for most Premier League sides. So we'll be moving him on anyways. It's just kind of just keeping him on for this season. Uh, in terms of centre-backs, we've got Wallace, Joe Gomez, Mark Barter and Joel Matip who are our centre-backs. So I bought in Barter to be our first choice uh, centre-back. Lovren was apparently, uh, according to my coaches, only a good player for most Premier League sides. Matip and Barter are now leading play Premier League centre-backs and so they're our first choices. In terms of backups, we've got Joe Gomez who's a very capable ball-playing defender so it's good to see. He'll be the backup to Mark Barter. And Wallace is a youngster with potential as well. Good player for most Premier League sides, potential to be leading. Uh, in fact, he's actually even ahead of Joe Gomez in terms of ability. So he'll be the backup to Joel Matip and eventually take over from him as well. Left backs, we've got Robertson and Moreno. Um, so Robertson is a youngster with potential. Uh, the same can be said about Moreno in truth. Both of them are sort of good players for most Premier League sides. But apparently Robertson just about edges him in terms of ability. And I think Moreno sort of accepted his rotational squad status. So I'll just go on with Robertson as our first choice and Moreno as a backup. And whoever develops more and becomes a leading player will be our outstanding first choice left back. Otherwise, we're going to be moving both of them on to create a better balance. Central midfielders, we've got Chan. Uh, why, we, I always forget how to say his name, let's just call him Jorginho. Uh, James Milner, Henderson, I was our central midfielders. We're playing a 4-2-3-1 formation, I feel like it brings out the best out of this team. It makes the most out of our attacking talents as well. So it's going to be a, a centre midfield partnership of Henderson and Chan. Uh, both uh, our best choice centre midfielders. Milner, very capable backup and so is Jorginho. And uh, they're just a bit unfortunate that they, you know, they expect first team football, I think. Maybe it's Milner who does. Okay, apparently I'm wrong about both. So it's good to see them both uh, fine with rotational football. The problem is they're a bit on high wages, particularly Milner. 140k is a bit too much. 31 years of age, he's going to decline. And the truth is we're not going to be able to move him on to another club because no one's going to be paying him that high wages. And we'll have to sort of just let him run out his contract until 2019. Um, but for now, a very decent backup player to our central midfielders. Uh, Marco is going to be our backup to Lalana, actually. So Lalana is going to... The problem, actually, let me just start over. So the problem with our attacking talent is trying to fit them all into the same side. So I thought if uh, we've got these players here, we're trying to squeeze in really from central midfield to about the striker department. We're trying to squeeze in the best players possible. So I squeezed in Henderson and... Let's get rid of these squeezed in Henderson and Chan into the centre midfield areas that left just four more spots our front four uh, we thought Marco's not good enough for first team uh, to be a first choice player just yet he's a decent backup the same can be said about Alex Oxlade Chamberlain even though he's expecting first team football so it's about trying to fit in these eight players in four spots um, well actually sorry you could say six players in four spots uh, so I thought Salah is a better player than Sadio Mane, according to our scouts. He plays as an inside forward as well, so we'll be playing him on the right. We squeezed in Lalana into the attacking midfield position. He's supposed to be our best attacking midfielder. Coutinho is a very capable left midfielder as well as an attacking midfielder, but uh, since Lalana's playing there, we will just squeeze in Coutinho in the left wing, and his, his ability doesn't drop because of it. Uh, I thought it was between Firmino or Sturridge for our striker position, but I thought with Sturridge's susceptibility to injuries, uh, I will go for Firmino as a first choice, and I feel like he's a bit of a better striker um, and I think it would make more sense to have him as our first choice striker in truth. Uh, I didn't feel right putting Firmino as a backup uh, and so Sturridge is actually going to be his backup and a very expensive one um, but yeah you know his problems with injuries I thought there's no way he could really be a first choice striker but he is a leading player for most Premier League sides at the moment at least uh, and so he's definitely going to be a very capable so in terms of backups we've got Sturridge the backup to Firmino in the striker department Lallana's backup is actually going to be um, Marco who we're going to retrain for attacking midfield position uh, we've got Mane as the backup to Coutinho and for Salah we've got Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain 
as his backup. So that I feel like that gives us the best balance. But of course, a lot of these players, Mane uh, and Sturridge in particular, don't deserve to be backups and they're going to be upset with the, the lack of first team football. So Danny Ings is someone that we're trying to move on, but no one, I mean, there's people interested, but not putting in any serious bids. Um, Ragnar Klavan, we're trying to sell him off because we bought Wallace now. We don't need Klavan as a backup. And that's just what I'm talking about in terms of giving better balance. Klavan was a backup to play, for example, to Lovren or Joel Matip. But now we have a better backup in Wallace, a youngster who can actually improve. And Klavan, 31 years of age, just a good player for most Premier League sides. Doesn't make sense to hold on to him. So we've talked a bit too much, but we can go into tactics and quickly kick off. So in terms of how we're playing, we talked about playing a 4-2-3-1 formation. We're going to be trying to play a sort of 4-2, uh, not 4-2-3, sorry, a uh, pass and move type of football. Uh, and we've got some good players and good movement. So what we're looking for are players that dribble, um, players who uh, roam and uh, players who have good vertical or horizontal, I think it is actually, uh, horizontal movement. Uh, so inside forwards, you know, they move they cut inside, so that's sort of horizontal movement as well. Uh, we've got someone who's willing to do the dirty business in the ball-winning midfielder spots, such as Chan. To be honest, uh, Emre Chan and, and Henderson are both uh, very capable players of playing in any sort of role. Uh, possibly their best roles are the box-to-box -box midfielders, for example, and the advanced playmaker role that he likes here. Uh, but the truth is we don't need that for our balance. We're trying to bring out the best out of Lana. I know he's an advanced playmaker, but he's very capable as an attacking midfielder. And we also need overlapping partnerships. So we've got support, Coutinho and Salah on support, and Robertson and Vidal getting ahead of them. Uh, normally, you could go with a fullback on attacks uh, role or a wingback on attack role and be very capable. I thought I thought both fullbacks though are very good as complete wingbacks on attack though, and it encourages them to dribble more. If I could just show that. Yeah, so it encourages them to dribble more, uh, to run wide with the ball, they cross more often, they sh roam from their positions as well. So they're the only fullback position that actually allows them to roam. And so since we're trying to encourage that pass and move type of football, I thought that would make the most sense. Uh, Henderson is a very capable deep line playmaker and Emre Chan as well. Both players, to be honest, can play either role. Uh, and so we might have to switch them around to see who can play better. But this midfield triangle here, this is what works best uh, in terms of balance. Um, but yeah, I, I just put Henderson on the right because he has a preference. Chan doesn't care either way, so I thought might as well play him on the left, and that's kind of it. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, definitely can move either one of them. So we're going to be playing on control because that's our mentality. The, the board expect, part, uh, well not pass and move, they expect possession but attacking football at the same time. And so that's why I kind of went for pass and move football. Uh, so control, team shape is fluid. We've got intelligent players, very capable players. And I thought maybe uh, we could take advantage of our good attacking talent and uh, go with the fluid team shape. In terms of team instructions, um, we've gone with a higher tempo to help with that, you know, moving the ball quickly. We're also playing fairly wide to try and use as much width as possible. Title marking, closing down more, offside trap and pushing slightly higher up just to try and win the ball back in, 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 as much you know as much as possible we've also gone with shorter passing so we're not you know just kicking the ball about pointlessly it might um you know sort of contradict the higher tempo but i'm hoping our players being close to each other and having good movement can help with the shorter passing and the higher tempo so that way we're not losing the ball or, or putting in stupid passes we want to be attacking through our flanks mainly so i'm exploiting both the flanks and hoping to bring out the best out of Salah and Coutinho with Lalana sort of just orchestrating everything and Firmino providing a very good um, role in the complete forward on support. So uh, he's actually best in the false nine role and apparently Sturridge can play that if not in the poacher. Uh, but we don't need the poacher role in truth. Um, we're not looking for someone like that. We're looking for overlapping partnerships. So attacking midfielder on attack will go past the complete forward on support. Uh, also go past the false nine, but the false nine's got more risky passes and moving into channels while uh, But we're looking for something a bit better. So complete fold on support uh, Dribbles more and they roam from positions and they can hold up the ball too in a different way than the false nine can And so we've gone with complete forward on support which for me is very very comfortable with and so is storage So it just seemed to make sense to squeeze them in that role um, and the average roll stability as you can see is quite high So these players should be very capable in playing intensity is a bit um, uh, it says it's just a moderate level, but it seems to be a bit high. Um, so we will have to be careful in terms of fitness and hope to do well. So this is actually our first choice uh, starting 11, like I mentioned. Uh, obviously Vidal 
it's just because Klein's injured. So we do have to deal with a couple of injuries that we picked up. Lalana's been out for two to three months from the start of the season anyways. Coutinho though, he did pick up a bit of an injury and so did Firmino, who's actually out for four to seven weeks. Uh, so we'll need to actually put in their backups and we do have some short numbers. It's not a good game to be short of numbers in, um, but we will have to deal with it of course. So Sturridge is supposed to be Firmino's backup. Um, Lalana's backup is actually supposed to be Marco and uh, where is he gone? He's injured as well. So we're dealing with a bunch of injuries at the start of the season. It's not the best time, um, but we'll just have to move on from it. I think we can just go back to the tactics board and see who can replace the players. So in terms of Lalana, there's Firmino is injured. Coutinho's out. Salah can play in attacking midfield apparently. Mane as well. But I think I will push up uh, uh, Jorginho here. Striker. Maybe I can register Ings. Uh, and just play him for the one game before we sell him off. Salah's already playing. Mane maybe. But we're still looking for an, a, inside, a left winger as well. So this is a problem. Mm. Yeah, so I think actually we will play Mane on the left. And in terms of our striker, we'll just register Danny Ings and play him for a single game before we... Maybe maybe this will draw up some, uh, some interest in him. And that way... You know, we do need the. I didn't expect to need Danny Ings, but apparently we do. So we'll just use him for today's game, see how he performs. Uh, complete forward on supports should be okay with him, I think. Yeah, he's all right. And uh, to be honest, he's actually a very capable player. He's just unlucky that we're missing, uh, that we have too many players in this position. He's also susceptible to injury, so that's why I decided to move him on. But yeah, good player, 25 years of age. It said he had a bit of potential, but the likelihood is he won't be able to improve anymore. And so I thought might as well move him on. There's some play some teams interested, but they just don't have the money for him, I suppose. So yeah, Barta on the right is a ball playing defender. Matip on the left as a central defender. And that should give us a good balance. And let's hope that we'll see some good performances from our players. I think we can finally kick off too much talking for my liking. Anyways, doesn't get bigger than Manchester United. And uh, hopefully we can grab a win and get uh, all three points. Uh, it's a rivalry, a derby. And a huge one as well. And uh, an important game to try and win the opposite, uh, the, the fans, sorry, the supporters on our side. So uh, Mata is going to be looking to exploit the space here. So we're going to quickly get Henderson to man mark him. We already talked about our starting 11. But quickly looking at um, Manchester United ones. It looks like they bought in uh, Stefan de Vrij. I think he's from Lazio before. Yeah, so he's a decent signing. It's quite interesting because uh, Mourinho did already bring in Lindelof and uh, yeah, he has Eric Bailly as well, but he's gone for Stefan instead. Valencia and Blind. Hopefully we can exploit Blind's lack of acceleration. Pogba Matic is as good as it gets in midfield. Uh, Mata, Martial, Mkhitaryan and Lukaku is probably their strongest starting uh, attacking uh, quartet, I suppose. And we're hoping that our <laughs> attacking quartet can uh, compete. Salah and Mane can definitely do that. But Jorginho might be a bit uncomfortable in his um, more advanced role. And Ings. I just want to see if he can play as a shadow striker. That would actually help us a bit more. Uh, it's a bit better movement. Aggressions, 11, long shots. I think he, we can actually squeeze him in as attacking as a shadow striker instead. So we'll quickly make that change too. The uh, shadow strikers have better um, movement and they combine better with a complete forward on support. They also, you know, move into channels, vertical movement, what we were talking about. And they dribble more than the attacking midfielder. So it suits our tactic a bit better. I would have loved to play Lalana in that role. But apparently he's not that good there. So in terms of team talk, apparently we're underdogs. So I think we can just go for that team talk, try and inspire our players to put in a decent performance and grab our first win of the season, hopefully. So let's kick off. We uh, need to make some changes. Don't want the table to show. It's not that competitive just yet. It's not the last day of the season. Um, quickly go on to TV, key highlights. Uh, between highlights we can let it go very fast that's fine replays we do want replays on director what do we want showing the goals notifications whatever man leave it as is all right what I love about the new 3d match engine is you can zoom in and zoom out but anyways uh, while we were doing that it looks like Manchester United had a decent chance there but thankfully that's over I'm gonna quickly pause and change some of these tabs I suppose if you want to call them I like to see my assistant's feedback and I like to see the opposition's formation just to see if they've made any changes. I actually forgot to have Henderson man mark the attacking midfield position. I don't want him marking a particular player, 
we just want them to mark the area in which we're weakest in. Um, you know, because the matter will definitely be trying to exploit this empty space here. We'll be doing the same to their formation, shoot. So hopefully, uh, you know, Georgino will have a really important role to play today. And uh, we will need him to step up. Simon though on the ball. A couple of other players are already not fit, so it looks like my assistant manager didn't do that great of a job in pre-season. But uh, let's hope the players, uh, the boys can still put in a good performance. Salah, the new signing. Incredibly well in real life, so let's hope he has the same type of performance. Vidal getting really forward as a complete wing back. He's overlapped Salah really well, and putting a decent ball into the box. Salah's free and he can grab a goal already. And within two minutes, Danny Ings and Salah have impressed and scored. Um, well, Salah is the one that scored, but what a good ball from Danny Ings. And, and uh, I mean, look at how Jorginho finds Vidal. Vidal's really forward. This is exactly what we're going to see. Overlapping partnerships. Really good ball into the box. Ings just heads it down really well. He draws all the defenders to him. And I think I want to see the replays on a slower speed just to, you know, uh, analyze it a bit better. But it's good to see that we've got, gone off uh, with a goal scoring start. Danny Ings getting an injury, an injury that we can't really afford in truth. Uh, Robertson with the delivery from a set piece. Thankfully, no one for Manchester United really forward other than Lukaku, which is, I guess, kind of expected. Jorginho, ah, Salah. Well, sorry, not even Salah, Sane. Mane, oh my god. That's a bit of Sadio Mane, and I just said Sane instead. Either way, Matip heads clear, but it's just Pogba to Matic, and it's Manchester United on the attack here. Good overlap from them, but we've covered it. Apparently not on both flanks. Marcia can find Lukaku and he's free. Can he finish? Yes, he can, unfortunately for us. Uh, I'd love to actually have a sweeper keeper to, you know, make up for our higher line. But I don't think uh, Simon here is too comfortable in the sweeper keeper role. I'd love a sweeper keeper on attack. And he's lacking in some places like acceleration. Of course, that comes hand in hand with pace. He can be a decent one to be fair. Centricity, first touch is 11, passing is 11. Yeah, I think he'll be actually okay, but let's just keep him in his most comfortable role. I'll have a look later and see um, if we want to switch him to... I didn't even make any changes, what's the game talking about? If we want to switch him towards the sweeper keeper, but for this game let's keep it as is. But yeah, good to see some attacking stuff from both sides. Uh, they did. Re I was talking about this flank here, Mane does really well to chase Valencia as he bombs forward. And unfortunately for us, I don't think Salah actually follows his man when Mkhitaryan makes a switch. Lukaku, Mata, and there you go, Salah's all the way forward. He shouldn't be man-marking Martial in truth, it's actually supposed to be one of these guys, Vidal, for some reason. He's caught in midfield and that exposes and he doesn't even, he sort of just tries and follows Matic instead of maybe coming back and covering his centre-backs for Lukaku. And Martial can find Lukaku really easily, a bit too easy for my liking. If you look at the end of the, here we've already got um, six Manchester United mid, uh, players in the box and you can already see Pogba outside on the edge of the box and Blinds really high up as well. So. That's it's as counter-attacking as it gets in truth, and uh, despite us playing on control, which is supposed to help negate the counter-attacking of the opposition team, uh, we still get caught on it, so my players are going to have to be a bit more alive. There's an immediate highlight after the goal, so hopefully it's in our favour, and uh, Chan has an opportunity here. Mane, can he find his partner? Instead, he loses that to Matic, and it's Manchester United getting forward again. Can we stop their counter? We do this time through Chan, Ings. Plays a smart ball to Henderson. Deep line playmaker, what can he do? Looking for a pass and he puts a really bad one in for Vidal. And uh, that is poor playmaking from Henderson. But Matip uh, cleans up and it's Chan on the ball here again. I feel like, I'm pretty sure it's Chan. Is it Chan or is it Khan? I heard commentators say Chan, I think. Once more, Martial breaking the line. Vidal getting caught out again. And this time... Simon does the save and that's exactly why we want the sweeper keeper to come and push out. He does he pushes up a bit more than a standing goalkeeper I think, but we're really getting exposed. I thought uh, having an offside trap would help with the, the high line that we're playing. Um, but I guess Manchester United's pacey forwards are kind of exposing us, but we're supposed to be doing the same on the other side. Salah, Mane, Ings and uh, Jorginho are supposed to be doing that too. Either way, shots wise and uh, performance wise we seem to be just about equal. But we do want to try and edge this game. Ings has picked up a knock that we can't afford. And I've actually forgotten to include the rest of my substitutes. So how great a manager am I? There's only four on the bench. And uh, players that won't necessarily change the game. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a top football manager. So that's great. 
they're having some bad performances at the back, so hopefully we can continue exposing that. Matip is also struggling a bit. It was kind of his error for the first goal, but he wasn't helped out by his right back. A couple of issues like Mark Barto losing possession more than anyone else. He is a ball playing defender, so I suppose that's kind of normal. And we've also lost a lot of possession in central areas of the midfield third of the pitch. Um, so that's a bit disappointing too, but we've got some other good things like regaining possession, which is exactly why we want Chan in that ball winning midfielder role. But anyways, we gonna have to make some changes later on let's try and encourage our players to keep up what they're doing um i don't think i want to say i'm happy maybe we can go with bin the better team doesn't seem to have inspired them too much but let's try you weren't that bad that seems a bit better the players are itching to get out there and are in positive spirits so there you go that's decent enough all right inks please hold on for the rest of the game normally i try and take off players who've uh, gotten a knock at half time um, but first of all, we don't really want Ings on our team anyways, uh, you know, we're trying to sell him, that's one thing. Second thing, no one really on the bench for him, um, and uh, we just need to try and let him hold on as much as possible. So, Robertson on the ball. Mane's free in the box, and he puts a decent delivery for Ings, and Ings scores, and I did not see that coming. But Ings is putting in one hell of a man-of-the-match performance in truth, and he seriously does not want to be sold. Um, but with uh, Firmino and Sturridge, Ings has no place in the squad, unfortunately. Robertson, though, does really, felt really well to find Mane. He's just free in the box there. No one marking him. Takes his time to pick out. And Ings is there to head it. He's a really good header, to be honest. But anyways, 2-1. Can we hold on to our lead this time? Manchester United punished us last time. We're exposing their defence quite well by the looks of it. Valencia on a less than 6 rating. And we're on the attack again. And Ings just has to be a bit smart here. Doesn't lose the ball stupidly. Really good ball for Mane. We have to get our bodies into the box when we're doing that. Mane with the delivery. Chan! And that is a chance that you would say he should finish. I think the... Uh, assistant referee? The linesman, sorry. That's the word. Um, flagged him offside, but still... So Matipas have the horrible game, uh, Georgina also, but we can't really afford to make too many changes. I'm honestly such an idiot for getting my substitution. I think we can just take off... Uh, let's, keep, let's keep Ings. Um, Georgina, there's no one on the... There's no one able to play in his position. I don't think I can actually afford to make any changes. Let's take off Matip for Wallace since he's had a horrible game. I don't really want to make a central defensive change but I guess since he's made the error might as well take him off that leaves us with Moreno and Milner making the only two more changes left so Robertson and I do want to move Mane into Ings position and maybe bring on Milner as an inside forward that's a bit unconventional but uh, I don't want Ings to just completely like destroy the poor guy Pogba with a set piece though can we clear the balls really easily into Mata who's dropped deep for it Lukaku's on it this time. We need to try and shut the man down a bit better. Instead, we've left Mata free in the box and he can finish. And you cannot let that Spanian, Spaniard uh, just have absolutely, completely free roam in the box. I mean, I, I've have, I have title marking, I have offside trap, I have closed down more. I understand why two players went to shut down one guy, but someone surely should have picked up Mata. First time he gets away here, it's kind of Wallace's fault in truth. He tries to shut him down, gets uh, Mata squares the ball, well, Lukaku does actually, and eventually it's both Wallace and Henderson who come out for it, which is fair enough. So what is Vidal and Chan doing here? Chan has a man, to be fair. Lingard is marked by Robertson, so really it's Vidal and Barto. Barto's playing as right back, who don't go with their men. Vidal's now concerned about Lukaku here, fair enough. And these two are position, Barto is not even in his actual position. Mata can just walk into the box, that's just crazy and uh, finish that chance we're being um punished for our own silly defensive mistakes and chan is getting a red card a hundred percent that was the stupidest tackle i've ever seen that man is going nowhere and suddenly we have to hold on for a draw by any means necessary so we'll bring on milner in the central midfield actually and i think we'll just have to play as is um might as well take off robertson for moreno it's a bit tired and uh, I think we do need the defensive substitution. We'll, I think we'll stay on control. 
might be a bit adventurous. We should go into contain and truth and just hold out for a draw. It's a respectable result, but I want to try and score nonetheless. Having said that, Manchester United to start the highlight and I'm not looking, I don't feel confident at all. Pogba with the delivery, K dealt with the initial threat, Martial, Lukaku and Simon deals with that. And uh, fair enough, it was a clear cut chance, but thankfully that was a poor header. I think I do want to go into contain now, they've sort of um, punished us. Okay, so take a breather, play even safer. That's just the standard contain things. Uh, I think playing fairly wide isn't helping us either, but I might consider changing to a balanced approach later on. There's a, a lot of these tactics, tactics we can actually change um, and reconsider, but let's clear the ball to the flanks to try and get it to our full, uh, to our right midfielders. Well, our flanks really, uh, since we're trying to expose that. Maybe you can shoot on sight, dribble less. Should we retain? Let's retain possession and clear the ball into flanks. See what happens there. Alright, let's hope our players do not. Okay, great. So, I didn't even finish my sentence and Manchester United are through in the box, so... Oh well. I think a draw is a respectable result at this point. Apparently we were underdogs anyways, so... Um, sort of defied expectations by not getting beaten so far. Uh, and getting a man sent off doesn't help that for sure as well, but maybe... I'm hoping we still catch them out somehow on the break. Love to go into counter instead but the way they've been stepping the game up recently we cannot risk it it's good to see uh, Marino not make too much of an attacking change Salado loses out to Darmian and Manchester United are going to try and expose this again Barta just comes across stupidly Lukaku's free and he hasn't finished it that's a bit weird that highlight was really strange it looked like he finished it, but he didn't. There's still one more. Manchester United can still kill the game for us, and they... Whoa. Okay. I was... They should show a replay of that, because that was an incredible save, whether that was the goalkeeper or the defenders. We are surviving just barely. I think we will get the draw now, unless we manage to score in the literally last 30 seconds of the game. And, uh, who is that, actually? Milner. Milner does a smart thing to find Barter. Just play it safe, but they're playing really risky. Vidal finally to Alberto. Milner loses out to Lingard. And uh, we were being safe, but instead we were being stupid after a little bit there. Uh, and Manchester United can punish us. Shut them down quickly. Damien's through in the box. Lingard, Herrera, Mane. We can finally get it away and it's over. And a draw is very, very decent. So that's all right, I think. Definitely well done. And uh, Chan is going to have hell to pay for since getting it sent off. Oh yeah, there is uh, some couple of updates I actually forgot to mention. The season expectations. We'll have a look at what the board expect from us uh, in terms of the competitions, uh, what we're aiming for. Obviously, why we took over Liverpool is to try and turn them into Premier League champions. That's an, something that's obvious. Uh, but we do want to try and overtake Manchester United in terms of league titles. We obviously do want to win the first Premier League title since it's been, you know, revamped. Uh, everyone mocks Liverpool for that. So it's just knocking Manchester United off their perch once more. Um, but first things first, getting into a Champions League spot would be good for this season. Uh, if we challenge for title, which I think we have a decent enough squad to do, uh, it's all a question of being consistent enough. Um, then you know that would be really good too but the the main long-term aim is to just dominate the Premier League like Liverpool used to do before uh, so yeah competition expectations board just expect Champions League football which is why it's the target that I've set uh, Champions League is just to reach the quarter-final uh, a bit of a high expectation in truth but yeah we're still in the best place playoff I won't be showing you any of the cup competitions until we've met expectations the League Cup's not important so I won't show you until we reach the final if we do FA Cup's the same thing until we reach the finals no point Champions League until we reach the quarter-final I won't be showing you any Champions League games unless there's some huge game in the group stage that really needs to be shown um, but yeah I'm not a fan of showing cup competitions I like to actually show you um, a game per month so we show you the month of October and uh, month of August sorry's game so we won't be back until September so these are the fixtures to look out for there's Burnley, Swansea, Caribou Cup uh, or League Cup, uh, West Ham and Leicester 
and uh, if you ask me it depends on how these teams are performing by the time we reach them um, but we'll probably sounds about right to come back for the West Ham home game or Leicester away would be quite interesting too uh, we do have Arsenal and Tottenham as well so our first three opening fixtures are very difficult if we can navigate our way through that then we can seriously start to pick up points later uh, we go on for quite a streak here from Burnley to about Chris uh, to Huddersfield we should be winning just about every game there uh, and obviously when we face Chelsea again then we should be alright but anyways um, I think that's kind of it uh, if we can have a quick look at their history maybe I didn't really show Liverpool's history uh, but very inconsistent up and down sort of things and as you can see not a single win they've been in second three times in the past was that like 20 years uh, so we just want to finally break the barrier, finally push through. We've got a ton of money, finances are really good, 80 million at the moment, projections are really good too. Uh, a bit of debt of course, but nothing too heavy, nothing that you wouldn't see in any other Premier League club really. And uh, so we do have the finances and the power to actually turn this team into you know, a Premier League winning one, so hopefully we can do that. But anyways, that's all for today's episode, so if you did enjoy it, of course please hit the like button and subscribe for more Daily Football Manager 2018 content. And as always guys, thank you all for watching.